art pop. That was a big, bold, massive artistic pop statement that at the time felt like it kind of divided. Fans loved it and critics were confused by it and it felt like such a huge step towards the club. Almost a giant leap, right? That people oh, yeah. were like, whoa, crazy, crazy, it crazy. It was too soon. <laughs> Pop was very rebellious. I would not adhere to one look. I would adhere to every look. I said my art pop could mean anything. And when I, as an artist, raise my hand and go, I will not subscribe to any archetypical behavior just because it makes the world comfortable, they go, F you, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Chaotic Web. My name is Jake and today I'm diving into the beautiful and shocking world of art pop. A truly experimental project created by one of the most talked about performers of all time, Lady Gaga. But the project would be shrouded in mystery and chocked full of lost collabs, songs, apps, sequels, and promises that over time would cause art pop to gain a cult following. Now, over the course of art pop, Lady Gaga would find herself in trouble with Azalea Banks, Kendrick Lamar, and his team, R. Kelly, Kathy Horn, and even the entire country of Indonesia, all leading up to a $25 million loss that would classify art pop as the most critically acclaimed commercial failure of all time. During this drug-fueled dream of electronic music, Lady Gaga would not only have to deal with multiple dangerous characters, but would also have a tumultuous and messy split from her management team that would send her music career spiraling and art pop on the brink of failure. Anyway, speaking of art pop, with our next sponsor, you can actually hide the girl who lives behind the aura with internet security like no other. Now, me and Shelby are constantly crawling the internet for our next deep dive story. But the reality is, is that the internet isn't always the safest place. Anyone can find literally anything on the internet, including your full name, address, phone number, and even relatives. Now, I've had my identity stolen a couple of times, and it is one of the most frightening experiences of my entire life. Now, this information is available because of data brokers who sell your information to telemarketers, spammers, and really anyone who wants to buy it for whatever nefarious reason. That's why I'm so excited for today's sponsor, Aura. Now, Aura will identify those data brokers who are selling your information and send the opt-out request for you. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists, which is super convenient. But Aura does even more. They monitor your emails and passwords to detect if you are a part of a data breach. Aura's app also features a VPN VPN, passenger manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, parental controls, and protects your device from malware. So in times where our whole lives have been virtually moved online, Aura really has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all in one app. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a free two-week trial with my link. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. So so click the link in the description box or go to Aura.com slash deep dive to start your free trial or scan our QR code. Thank you so much again to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the dark and wild world of art pop. By the year 2013, Lady Gaga had built one of the most robust catalogs of all time. With her mega debut The Fame and the quick follow-up The Fame Monster, Lady Gaga was unstoppable. 2011 had brought major notoriety on the Born This Way front, and Lady Gaga wasn't just a musician, she was a performer, creating some of the most memorable and shocking fashion looks of all time. This is prevalent in Lady Gaga's 2009 tour, The Monster Ball, where she almost went bankrupt for paying for tons of the costumes and set pieces out of her own pocket. She wanted the tour to be grandiose with no expense spared. 
However, Lady Gaga's financial ruin was not in vain. The Monster Ball was one of the most publicized and successful promotional tours of all time, even though it was also one of the least profitable. Her next tour, the Born This Way Ball, would also have a very dark side, as Lady Gaga suffered from a debilitating hip injury and wasn't even able to complete the tour that was recouping her financial ruin. Now remember, this was 2011 when streaming had just started and touring was becoming the main way musicians were able to make money. Maybe her hip was torn this way. A labral tear in her right hip, forcing Lady Gaga to cancel the rest of her Born This Way ball tour. And on Wednesday, to go under the knife. Going in for surgery now. Thank you so much for sending me love and support. I will be dreaming of you. I'm devastated and sad, she tweeted earlier. It will hopefully heal as soon as possible. I hate this. I hate this so much. The rehabilitation or recovery after this type of surgery is generally around four months. After that period of time, the expectation is no limitation. Lady Gaga may have been laid up with a broken hip and no money, but she also had officially entered the world stage. While all of this was happening, fans didn't know it yet, but Lady Gaga was hard at work on her next studio album. And it would be entirely different from not only her previous work, but pretty much anything that's ever been released. Lady Gaga would attempt to do the impossible, taking highbrow fashion and combining it with elements of punk in one giant experimental masterpiece she would call Art Pop, combining the worlds of art and pop together. However, the original concept was seemingly the opposite. Starting in 2012, Lady Gaga began teasing an immediate sequel to Art Pop, saying that the first volume, the pop side, would be full of commercially successful and viable songs, and the second volume, the art side, would be pure experimentation. However, as the project progressed, Lady Gaga realized that that was sort of defeating the purpose of combining the two. So she would go with just two albums, simply titled Art Pop Volume 1 and Art Pop Volume 2. Now, Lady Gaga was obsessed with the image of blonde decaying beauty at this time, and was leaning towards much more violent lyrics on this new project. One of the first songs she wrote was about Princess Diana, Lady Gaga stating at the time that the song is about all the legends that we've lost because, quote, I think it's really fucked up that we only revere people as artistic legends when they're dead. We never give them any props while they're alive. So let's change that. Art Pop was anticipated to be an experimental mess masterpiece, as she wanted to make something more playful and self-referential than her previous work. Nick Monson, one of the collaborators on the project, recounted the meticulous process behind creating the album's second track, Venus, saying that they created it in the back room of Los Angeles' record plant, from the bottom up playing the beat over and over for two straight days, saying she worked on the bass line for hours and hours because she wanted to get it completely right. It was full mermaid, full strobe light, full technicolor in the studio. The way she put it, the intention of the album was to, quote, put art culture into pop music. A reverse of Warhol, instead of putting pop onto the canvas, we wanted to put the art onto the soup can. Lady Gaga said at the time that making the art pop album was one of the only things that got her through the difficult tour. I don't, I, it's like, do you have to breathe? Right. I have to make, I'm obsessed with music. If I didn't have music while I was on the Born This Way ball, I never, ever would have been able to finish that tour. It was the ability to make the records after the show, staying up all night. We, we built a studio in my hotel room everywhere we went. So that's, you know, a lot of what Terry filmed is us just, you know, setting up, building, breaking setting down. Up Most of that became art pop, right? No, the whole thing became art pop. Right. And, and the film is actually essentially the making of this album through the experience of this kind of downfall moment in my life. Art Pop would be Lady Gaga pouring all of herself into a project and throwing every concept at the wall to see what would stick. Unfortunately, some of these concepts would prove to be far too ambitious and some just downright offensive. Now, the first track of the album would be leaked on a fan site by Gaga herself under the name Boris, after her label refused to let her release it under the title that she had chosen. What? 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 That's what? real. That is f real. That's real. What? 
That's really Barca. The song was originally titled Barca, with the main chorus line being, do you want to see the girl who lives behind the Barca? When it leaked, many criticized Gaga for her cultural insensitivity as a non-Muslim white woman using Middle Eastern culture as a marketing ploy. She had to change the title to Aura and essentially replace all mentions of the word Barca. Except for one line towards the end, in which the word was left in as an easter egg for fans. Now, at this point, Lady Gaga had already been going around and being photographed by paparazzi adorned in a burqa, which many deemed to be cultural appropriation. However, this was nothing compared to the story of a similarly controversial track titled Party Nauseous. Now, none other than rap legend Kendrick Lamar was supposed to be featured on this track, but it would prove to be one of Lady Gaga's first lost promises to her fans and her first lost collaborator off the project as a whole. See, Party Nausha started as a song Lady Gaga wrote about her relationship with Jakarta in Indonesia. During the Born This Way Ball, Lady Gaga was scheduled to perform a sold out show in Indonesia, a secular Islamic country. However, leading up to the event, people holding signs adorned with go to hell Lady Gaga would descend upon the streets of Jakarta. This is, you know, this is just the latest in a long string of protests and controversies following her wake through Southeast Asia. It certainly is, and she held out for quite some time. You know, the millions of little monsters all around the world go goo-goo for Gaga, mainly because of her bold defiance of societal norms. But it seems the pop icon may have just met her match in Indonesia. All that has arguably made Gaga the most controversial woman in the world. So much so, she risked physical harm if she sets foot in Indonesia for her June 3rd concert. So now, Gaga is backing down under furious pressure from local authorities there, announcing Sunday her sold-out show in Jakarta will not go on. For weeks, Gaga had been facing heavy opposition from some religious and local leaders who demanded Gaga tone down her provocative style. But protests by hardline Islamic groups continued and threats of violence grew louder. Some speculate that she was answering protesters when she tweeted Saturday, there is nothing holy about hatred. And Salim Alatis, the head of Islamic Defender Front, was quoted saying Lady Gaga is a, quote, vulgar singer who wears only panties and a bra when she sings. And she stated she is the envoy of the devil's child and that she will spread satanic teaching. Now, Lady Gaga stated that Indonesian authorities were demanding she censor the show and she actually was considering ditching her entire crew of backup dancers and performing the concert so Solo in Jakarta. But alas, that wasn't enough. Gaga was in danger. So, against Gaga's wishes, they canceled the show. Lady Gaga was quoted saying, We had to cancel the concert in Indonesia. I'm so very sorry to the fans, and just as devastated as you, if not more. You are everything to me. I will try to put together something special for you. My love for Indonesia has only grown. Thus, Lady Gaga began writing Party Nauseous a song about wanting to make peace with the Indonesian people, but saying the government, quote, won't let her. No, they won't let her through. Clarifying in the song, I wouldn't want to be high with the enemy. Why I want to come and make peace with you, but they won't let me. No, they won't let me through. I don't mind if they arrest me, cause I'm wearing my Versace. However, Lady Gaga would announce that Party Nauseous had turned into a hip-hop slash J-pop record for Kendrick Lamar's album, and that it would be dropping on September 6th. However, September 6th came and went, and no song dropped. Then, on October 4th, Kendrick's tracklist was released, and Party Nauseous was noticeably missing. Now, this could have been for a number of reasons, but many speculated that the early art pop song concepts had way more EDM than in the final version. And we actually get a taste of this on the art pop tour, as Lady Gaga did end up using the song as an interlude, and it was practically rave music. Now, Kendrick's album was not EDM in the slightest, but that was the style Lady Gaga was pushing for. Lady Gaga would confirm this in a statement very shortly after, saying, I apologize to the fans that the situation with Party Nauseous is confusing. To clear it up, I must explain this. When I collaborate with an artist, I work solely for them, not with their camps or management. It's purely organic and creative. I love Kendrick dearly as a friend, but was not willing to compromise musically to the changes his team was making to my music. This is why I am not on his record. I have a very specific vision as a producer and songwriter, 
and I always have. That song will be released at a different time for a different project. I love you, and I think you should check out his stuff, because he is truly great. He's a good kid, it's just sometimes a mad city. Which, I don't know what that means, but also, like I said, she did end up using this as a interlude for her tour, so the song wasn't completely scrapped, but it was never officially released. And the producer of the song echoed Lady Gaga's statement, saying the beat was, quote, hot as few and it was a major opportunity for Kendrick to get a Lady Gaga song. But for that to happen, all parties have to agree. Now, there would be one more collab that would actually come out on Kendrick's album. However, Lady Gaga's singing of the chorus would be edited out before it could be released, because Kendrick and his team didn't feel like she added anything to the song, and thought the original version was, quote, bad. But you know, another big decision was, uh, don't kill my vibe. So, you know, we got Interscope. Right. So Lady Gaga went to get on the record. So she got on it, and like we listening and comparing the original one to that, and it's mm. like, man. I don't know if she made it better. Right. But it's mm. like, we battling because it's like, it's Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, like, wouldn't, she's like. She's a huge it's pop star, here, span our drop. audience, yeah. the whole thing. But it's like, we have to stay true to the integrity of the music. You mm. know what I mean? You heard, so, the, you heard the Lady Gaga version? No. <laughs> Is it good? Bad. Not that bad. Face. <laughs> That's bad. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. I can feel your energy from two planets away. I got my drink, I got my music. I will share it, but today I'm feeling. Mm. The, guy, the guy got be like, yo, what the fuck? Y'all ain't use my shit? Yeah, she was hot. She ended up putting it out. <laughs> she put it she out. Put it out. out. Yeah. She had a little I'm video out. to it. Yeah. I remember that. She had I never saw the video. Yeah. She's getting on a private I jet. I mean, she didn't like tell us she was doing it. Like, we looked up and it was out. And she did a video? Yeah. So it appeared that Lady Gaga wasn't the easiest person to collaborate with during the art pop era. She had a fuel dream she was bringing to life. And she clearly had a very specific vision. Now, with one collaborator down and another collaborator behind bars, we'll get to that, the next story couldn't possibly be more tumultuous, right? Wrong. Art pop was the land of the impossible, which is why Lady Gaga would record not one, but two songs with the queen of New York City herself, Azalea Banks. Now, Lady Gaga would tease the track titled Ratchet, and another track would mysteriously leak titled Red Flame. After teasing the title, Ratchet, Gaga would remove the track for unknown reasons. However, at a meet and greet, fans would secretly record a video of Gaga essentially confirming that the collab was canceled due to Azalea's, quote, bad attitude, despite releasing a feature with R. Kelly himself. She's like, um, she needs, she's got a bad attitude. Yeah. 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 Girl, we know Gaga. Gaga, we've been known that. That's why we didn't want her on there. She broke. Now, this would cause Azalea to go on numerous Twitter rampages exposing Lady Gaga for allegedly stealing a song from her and slandering her up and down, capping off the rant by simply tweeting, Team Katie. Which, that was a whole feud in itself. Lady Gaga and Katy Perry's fans got into a huge war in 2013 because Roar and Applause were both being released like at the same time and they were competing on the charts. So their fans would go back and forth and it was like a huge thing. She's laughing at Katy Perry right now. <laughs> now, as recently as 2022, Azalea would continue to air out Gaga for her unusual practices, saying, quote, that woman has zero respect for black women. I cannot ever respect her for literally asking me to beef with Nicki Minaj on her behalf. I refuse and send a less incendiary song, insinuates that we're gonna spill Nikki's quote, human blood. Eye roll. The gays have been falling for her hodgepodge pseudo BS for years. At least Lana has the balls to admit that she's a whites only water fountain confederate Sally American lynch mob romanticist. Like her deep, deep jealousy and hatred for Nicki Minaj and the sneaky sh she was saying and trying to do behind the scenes was just gross. If I want to beef or pop sh about Nicki, I will do so on my own accord. I will never do a white woman's bidding for her. Tuck. End quote. She also claimed to have receipts of Gaga sh talking Nicki, saying, I definitely have those Lady Gaga sh talking Nicki Minaj receipts in an old phone, telling me she wanted to drink my blue. Azalea would also respond to Twitter users, suggesting she was just angry that Gaga had rejected her for a collaboration. She replied, Pfft. 
I never, ever sent the girl a collab. She sent me two. I turned in one. And she will still never, ever be 212. Azalea Banks is the diva who out white girls all the white girls. And they're still pressed. End quote. Okay, y'all, so that's now two major collaborations who Lady Gaga seemingly couldn't cooperate or work with. But there were a few that went through, mainly Jewels and Drugs with Twista and Too Short, but also a hit song called Do What You Want with disgraced singer and convicted criminal R. Kelly. Now, I'll get more into that specific collaboration during the album's launch, but trust me, it's very disturbing. Anyway, another instance where fans thought Lady Gaga was teasing a possible collaboration on the album was the time Gaga and Rihanna shared a Twitter interaction posting back-to-back -back lyrics from the fourth track, Streams, which was actually Lady Gaga's first choice for the debut single off of Art Pop. So maybe Rihanna and Lady Gaga were supposed to be featured on the first single of Art Pop. However, fans could have never guessed what was to come, with her most avant-garde project to date. During the Born This Way ball, Gaga was working closely alongside Terry Richardson to film a documentary that would allow every step of the creative process throughout the album Art Pop. However, this project, among many other lost relics of the album, would sadly never see the light of day. So why did Lady Gaga claim she didn't remember this album? At this point in her career, Gaga had already been known for her wild outfit choices, flashy makeup, and unique hairstyles. But this new album cycle would kick it up to the next level. And even go a few steps too far. Now, she began to tease the new album cycle across her social media while working on the album. Another story, two years ago, I lobbied to, to play Lady Gaga uh, a demo idea that Anton did. After three days of logistically figuring out how I was going to do this, I jumped into her SUV on the way to a show, a show she was playing at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, they give me an eighth-inch cable, I plug it into my iPhone, I play her 60 seconds of an idea. She grabs my phone, she says, call Jimmy Ivy. We call Jimmy, she says, you gotta sign this kid. I email Smith and Anton, I say, I just sat with Gaga. She wants you to produce her whole record. And she would even interact with producer Zed on Twitter, causing fans to speculate the possible title tracks from the unknown upcoming album were Temple, Onion Girl, and Bacon. However, none of these tracks would even end up on the project. Another song that didn't make it on the project is Brooklyn Nights, an electronic ballad where Lady Gaga sings her heart out about wanting one last Brooklyn night with an old fling. And y'all, that's like me and my sister's favorite song on the album. Y'all should go check it out. It's so good. Arguably though, one of the most experimental songs that didn't make it on the album was a diss track titled Cake Like Lady Gaga, where Gaga would take heavy influence from rap culture, including memorable bars such as Barka Swag Like Lady Gaga and YouTube Beef I Wear Me. She would even take a swing at the very fashion industry who had so heavily criticized her style and weight, telling Kathy Hahn her quote, style ain't duke, and ending her verse saying, I'm getting fat and so is my bank. I'm on a sold out world tour, bitch. Hey, yo. I'm Lady Gaga, you know I'm Lady Gaga Laser cut up, lot of mesh, mugless show I'm Lady Gaga Bad bitch is gonna walk the runway Walk bitches like Lady Gaga Ortenberg, you can suck my dick Walk bitch, you ain't Lady Gaga Nico Panda got style trick Kathy Hone, your style ain't dick Walk a mile in these foot high heels I run in these, you ain't running shit You chew beef, I wear meat And stay on top of the I'm, 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 I'm getting fat and so is my bank I'm on a sold out world tour, bitch All fans went crazy for the track And although it was never officially released There was like a whole saga of it going Going up and getting taken down off Spotify, it's still available to listen to in full online, and I highly suggest you do so. Also, there will be a full video about the situation out on my new channel, Secret Society, this week. So Lady Gaga had simplified, cut down, and perfected Art Pop Act 1's track list, and the record was finally ready to be released. But it needed an album cover, and with her past album covers, it needed to be an amazing album cover. So Lady Gaga would enlist the help of artist Gianfranco Abella, whom she was a major fan of. He combined ultra-modern subjects into an abstract, quote, transgressor style. After Gianfranco finished the final draft, Lady Gaga apparently thought the artwork was quote too trashy too transgressive too old pop style and little like her thus she went in favor with the now iconic and unmistakable jeff koontz cover who she mentions in the lyrics of the lead single applause in a line that says one second i'm the koontz then suddenly the koontz is me 
The cover of the album would show a sculpture of Lady Gaga, with long hair and bangs, with a blue orb between her legs, and a trippy background with the title of the album in distorted pink lettering. So the album was now officially ready, but a lot was happening behind the scenes. See, Lady Gaga had split with her longtime creative director and manager just a week before Art Pop's release. Performing on the YouTube Music Awards last November, she nearly broke down. What happened that night that you got so emotional? You know, I'm not really legally allowed to say exactly what happened that day. Um, but, you know, my partner left me. And he told the whole world that I left him. You were talking about your split with your manager. Um, Yes. That's where all that emotion came from. That was very hard. The news, which broke just days before her album was to be released, shocked the music world. Troy Carter had nurtured her career for seven years, but Gaga felt her managers were taking her for granted. I think I felt like they weren't proud. Why weren't they proud? They had moved on to other things, other business ventures, and mm -hmm. I, felt, I felt abandoned. You met Stephanie Germanata, better known <laughs> as Lady Gaga. Yes, she was an unknown at the time. She had just gotten dropped from Def Jam Records at the time. You know, this girl with these, you know, huge dark sunglasses and fishnet stock and the no pants. She and I were kindred spirits right away, just kind of really hit it off. So, you know, this is another relationship that ended abruptly for you what happened the relationships change and you begin to know what you're really good at and i i, I kind of started looking at us as i'm really great at being an accelerator this sort of you know we sign you as a kid and we we go through 30 years i don't even know if you know if that's my personal ambition any, any, anymore. I think after working with, with, with Gaga and kind of going through that heartbreak of, you know, just we worked incredibly hard to build this sort of empire, and then all of a sudden, you know, you kind of get snatched out of it. I was not generated by a factory. I was not generated by a corporation. I am very grateful to all the corporations that have helped me to distribute my materials and my ideas to the world. But the reality is, it is a very scary thing in the music world and in the art world when the corporate world starts to take credit for the work of the artist. Because the artist, this is where it all happens. It's if our minds go, there's nothing else. Somebody gives me a canvas at the beginning of every album cycle and it's blank and I'm left with a paintbrush and I sit by myself. And that is the thing that I want people to re re know and recognize not just about me, but about themselves. There is nobody that comes in and says, oh, it should look like this, oh, it should feel like this. I know what you should do with Art Pop, you should go here. That is not what happens. There's a canvas, a paintbrush, and an artist, and then the ideas start to come, and that is what Art Pop is. And what I want my fans to know is you will not be defined by the people that hire you. You will not be defined by the corporate world around you. You will be defined by the ideas that are in your own heart and in your own mind. And it is just you and that brush and that canvas. And you will work hard enough that one day you will assign only your name at the bottom of that blank page. This was the same team that had worked with her since before the fame's release. And with the release of Art Pop, the differences were immediate. See, the release would begin with a very rocky start. Low quality and high quality leaks of applause, the first single of the album, began leaking across the entire internet. Universal Music Group set up a website to report these leaks and tons of links were taken down. However, on August 12th, 2013, Lady Gaga tweeted, due to hackers, an abundance of low and high quality leaks, we issue this pop music emergency. Monsters spread the word. And with that, Universal Music Group released the first single off Lady Gaga's album, Art Pop, titled Applause. 
Now, art pop was already plagued with issue after issue, but Lady Gaga would power through. Applause debuted with a music video, which included Lady Gaga's head photoshopped onto a goose, herself half naked dressed as a goddess, complete with gender bending outfits, and her face smeared in colorful paint. This single was a major success and could be heard playing in every grocery store and retail chain at the time. The song was high energy and celebratory, combining Gaga's signature musical stylings and showcasing her ability to sell a booming pop hit. However, the next single off the album would have much darker undertones. It's no wonder that Gaga wants people to forget art pop, as it was packed to the brim with controversy and missteps. See, the original second single for art pop was the booming dance track titled Venus. Lady Gaga would even announce it on Twitter, as little monsters began trending Venus across the platform. However, in the meantime, Do What You Want was used in a Beats by Dr. Dre ad. And y'all, if you want all the details on how Dr. Dre lost his billion dollar status in seconds, there's already a whole chaotic web on that. Anyway, that Dr. Dre ad was pumped everywhere, and everyone instantaneously needed to hear the hit song. Fans began buzzing for Do What You Want, and Lady Gaga's management decided to pull Venus last second in favor of the song Do What You Want with R. Kelly, all because of the excitement over this ad. Now, this was so last minute that many of the art pop albums were still adorned with printed stickers labeling Venus as the second single. However, Lady Gaga's fans went nuts when this happened, but she assured them Venus would still be coming this time with a music video. So back to Do What You Want and R. Kelly. American singer R. Kelly has been sentenced to 30 years in prison by a US federal court in New York after he was found guilty of sexually abusing women, boys, and girls for decades. The second single Gaga released had featured disgraced R&B artist R. Kelly on a song distastefully titled Do What You Want, and the accompanying video came right out the gate with controversy when it was initially delayed. Now, Lady Gaga told her fans the video was quote, late because just like with the applause video, unfortunately, I was given a week to plan and execute it. Those who have betrayed me gravely, mismanaged my time and health, and left me on my own to damage control any problems that ensued as a result. Millions of dollars are not enough for some people. They want billions. They need trillions. I was not enough for some people. They wanted more. Now, the song's lyrics and theming were criticized for having undertones of sexual assault, which at this point R. Kelly had already been accused of by multiple women. Now, in live promotional performances such as Saturday Night Live and the American Music Awards, R. Kelly and Lady Gaga would shock the audiences by simulating sex on stage as they sang the racy lyrics, Do What You Want With My Body. The music video was filmed by Terry Richardson, who had also been accused of sexual assault, and it depicted Lady Gaga going under anesthesia and being taken advantage of, with numerous sexual innuendos alongside R. Kelly. The video was completely scrapped by her label for being extremely inappropriate and crossing too many lines to be released to the public. However, some of the footage would leak to the internet, and Gaga faced the brunt of the backlash from TMZ for her unusual choices in the video. Ladies and gentlemen, TMZ is proud to present the unreleased music video of Lady Lady Gaga's Do What You Want! Do what you want for my mom. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh my oh, God! What is he doing to Turn her? it up! Turn it up! Okay, what the hell just happened? She did a, a whole music video for the song with R. Kelly. It's directed by Terry Richardson and then didn't put it out. Reportedly for a number of reasons, like the video itself. The beginning of the video is a scene where Lady Gaga's having hip surgery and R. Kelly's the doctor. I really hope you can fix it. I I haven't been able to do anything. Okay, standard premise, and? Throughout the video, Lady Gaga's naked, and R. Kelly makes out with her, R. Kelly spanks her butt. R. Kelly puts her under general anesthesia, and he and his nurses do what they want with her body, twerking on it, groping it, eating lobster off it. Or shellfish of him. <laughs> Why? Okay, so you got a song, video, and uh, oh yeah, allegedly co-star. R. Kelly was acquitted. Fine, whatever, but that brings us to the director. Right when they were about to do this video, 
Terry Richardson had a big report come out where several models said that he assaulted them while shooting them. Which he denies. Still, all this stuff together was enough to freak out Gaga's people, so they shelved the video. She thought she was gonna be, she thought she'd be like pushing the envelope and like, oh, look, it's R. Kelly on a very me song. I mean, the song, do what you want with my body. Then why'd she change her mind? Because it backfired and everybody was like, this is creepy and weird and I don't like it and it flopped. And then she tried to distance herself from it. Okay, so what else happens in this video? Oh, she pukes. Nice. <laughs> Now, Gaga is quoted in a Japanese press conference. R. Kelly and I have sometimes very untrue things written about us. So, in a way, this was a bond between us uh, that we were able to say, and the public, they can have our bodies, but they cannot have our mind or our heart. It was a really natural uh, collaboration. Lady Gaga would change her tune entirely in 2019, when the documentary Surviving R. Kelly would debut to the world, exposing him as the predator that he is. After uproar from fans asking Lady Gaga to take accountability, she would respond to the victims coming forth by removing the song from streaming platforms and releasing a statement saying, I stand behind these women 1,000%. George, Lady Gaga says while she can't take back the decision to work with Kelly, she can go forward and continue to support victims of sexual assault. She says she's now vowing to never work with him again and describes her own sexual assault unrelated to Kelly, twisting her thinking. Overnight, Lady Gaga, the latest star to speak out against R&B star R. Kelly, saying in a statement posted on her Twitter account, I stand behind these women 1,000%, believe them, know they are suffering and in pain, and feel strongly that their voices should be heard and taken seriously. Adding an apology for working with Kelly on their hit collaboration, Do What You Want With My Body. Gaga also announcing she intends to remove the 2013 song from iTunes and other streaming sites. Adding an apology, saying, I'm sorry, both for my poor judgment when I was young and for not speaking out sooner all sparked by the explosive Lifetime documentary series Surviving R. Kelly, which showcases several women claiming sexual assault by the singer, allegations he has consistently denied. Two calls pouring into law enforcement after an Illinois prosecutor asked for alleged victims of the singer to come forward. Editorials calling for radio stations to mute R. Kelly, a hashtag that's been posted more than 30,000 times in the last seven days. What was your what was your reaction to Lady Gaga removing the R. Kelly version of Do What You Want from streaming services? And would you ever perform your version with Gaga now that you're both in Vegas? Ah, <laughs> that would actually be super fun. <laughs> Sharing the stage with her um, for that uh, performance of Do What You Want, it was almost like we were flipping it as one on the ear of everyone else. You can have this, you can have that, you can have, but you'll never have, you know, my integrity, my, my voice. And I was like, wow, like it's actually very fitting that we engage together in this song, having been in the business together as two females. I would always share the stage with her. She's a blast because she does know how to let go and have fun and sky's the limit. And I enjoy performers like that. First of all, to address uh, the R. Kelly thing, I was extremely moved by that whole show. It was, it was very heavy for me. I actually went through a lot of, um, yeah, it, <laughs> Let's not get too, let's not really go there, it but yeah, you. it, it, it you. absolutely did. And you know, when you're in this business, you're so exposed to so many predators and so many things and so many, you know, watching what had happened to Aaliyah and everything, you're exposed to so much at such an early age. Right. It's still an, an up a, a uphill battle. And I think she absolutely did the right thing. I love that she spoke and addressed it and, and showed her support. Art Pop would eventually debut November 6th, 2013, as Lady Gaga's lowest performing album at the time, and would be deemed by many as a commercial failure. A critic for the Rolling Stone claimed Gaga wants us to believe the LP was inspired by Marina Abramovich, Jeff Koons, and Sandra Botticelli. At its best, it sounds like it was creatively directed by RuPaul. Dr. Ruth, and Beavis and Butthead. Despite the critics tearing it apart, to many fans, the album is seen as ahead of its time. And Lady Gaga even encouraged her fans not to listen to the critics, and said to listen to the artists instead, and said they aren't artists. A lot of people believe at the time of art pop, Lady Gaga and the album were genuinely misunderstood. Lady Gaga had also released GUI, an art pop film, which was mostly well-received, as it included stunning visuals and unique pop culture 
culture references that helped guide audiences along with the theme of putting art back into pop culture, even including cameos from multiple Real Housewives, Andy Cohen, and the creator of Minecraft, Marcus Person. Now, though the album was swamped with negative press, Lady Gaga did have some other unique promotional stunts she used to create excitement for the upcoming release. One example that created shockwaves on the internet occurred at South by Southwest, when she would have a 19-year-old, quote, vomit artist throw up on her as she performed the song Swine, wearing dreadlocks. <laughs> What the f What the f I understand the song is called Swine and it's supposed to be disgusting, but bitch, this is gross. My god! What the f is she throwing out first of all? What the f is that? Why is it green? What the f did you eat? I wish I had that blonde dreadlock thing. That, that girl had. was brave, the vomiter. She just went for it. She. Could you guys recreate that right now? Yeah. And I'm sure most of you saw in your feeds too. It just one word: vomit, 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 vomit. So, that, I mean, let's talk about Millie. This is someone you've known for a while, right? Yeah, I've known Millie for I think like maybe five years now. The rea have you seen some of the reaction to it online and, and elsewhere? I mean, it's it's, it's interesting. It, it's everything from how how could she do this kind of thing putting the gag in Gaga kind of headlines. It was just exciting to see people talking about performance art on the internet and, you know, debating about whether it's art or not. And that's really great. I mean, we, we really just did it because we believe in the performance and we believe in what it meant to the song. Sometimes things that are really, really strange and feel really wrong can really change the world. I'm not saying vomit's going to change the world. Wrapping what we were talking about with Millie and the swine performance yesterday and the video that's coming up, you know, really what it's about is freeing yourself of the expectations of the music industry and the expectations of the status quo. And you know, as you become more and more successful, they start to push the rule book closer and closer to you and say, well, you know, now you're here, so how are you going to maintain it? And really what Art Pop is all about is how the truest way for us to maintain the music industry is to put all of the power back into the hands of the artist. The singer would also post a video of herself getting a septum piercing, which became a huge staple fashion piece she would wear throughout the album cycle. There was even an Art Pop app, including a personal assistant named Petka, voiced by Gaga. Hello, my name is Petka. I am the interface of this application. Before you can exist in the universe of Art Pop, I must first generate your aura. A character which would later reappear as part of her Enigma Vegas residency in 2018. Hello, Gaga. The app included futuristic displays and features, where users could purchase and listen to the songs directly from the app on a little digital record player. Now, Lady Gaga would go on to tease that she would be releasing many singles from the Art Pop app directly that hadn't made it onto the main album. People were expecting Tinnitus, Bacon, Temple, Cake Like Lady Gaga, Brooklyn Nights. However, this met the same fate as Art Pop Act 2 and never came to fruition. But we'll get into that later in the video. Another publicity stunt included a Japanese press release where she interviewed in a room full of life-size replicas of herself. Or another one where she just took forever to respond each time. The interview's been going for a couple of minutes now, and I noticed something. It's kind of impossible not to. Sometimes before questions, Gaga just shuts her eyes for a couple of minutes. I wonder if she's falling asleep because she's tired. I wonder if I'm boring her. I noticed that you, before you speak to me, you drop your eyes and centre yourself. Is that something that you learned off Marina Abramovich? Yeah, I, I did learn a lot of that from Marina and uh, from from Bob Wilson. I've been working with him for 40, well, for, for longer than 48 hours, but 48 hours uh, 
so uh, I like to just make sure that I give you my full attention and it's a lot of noise around me. And Now to promote the album, Lady Gaga would perform at various award shows. However, for once, this was stalling for her. As normally, Lady Gaga received oodles of press during the VMAs, but the year was 2013 and the only thing anyone was talking about was Miley Cyrus. Which by the way, we have an entire series about Miley Cyrus, but we also have a full video about the bangers era that I highly suggest you go check out. Now, Lady Gaga would even host a private release party for her fans that would be streamed across the internet, called Art Rave, for all of her fans, where she would perform the new album in its entirety. Lady Gaga even debuted the world's first flying dress named Volantis, which elegantly hovered a few feet from the ground. She had an art pop Christmas special with the Muppets, where she would dance with Kermit and RuPaul. She would even have a world tour, and experiment with a light-up wig that Gaga described was inspired by taking a Disney princess and putting her in a rave, as well as other numerous bizarre fashion statements, all in part to bring the album's theme of technology, futurism, sex, and drug use to life. Now, whether or not all the controversy that came along with that album helped to create a unique moment in pop culture history, or completely blundered what could have been a successful album run, one thing is for certain. To fans, the art pop era was an unforgettable one, and left them hungry for more. Now, like you remember from earlier in the video, during the project's run, Gaga had mentioned multiple times that she had already recorded an act two of the album. But unfortunately, diehard art pop apologists are eagerly still awaiting the release of this to this day, me being one of them. <laughs> For six long years, Lady Gaga's fans would scour YouTube, SoundCloud, Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter, spreading leaks, searching for new leaks, and creating fake albums out of what they had. And it would create a cult following of fans who primarily valued art pop and were in desperate need for Act 2. Now, like I said earlier, Gaga had intended for the album to have an A-side and a B-side, one of which was going to be marketable pop music, and the other a rather on the more experimental side. One possible reason Lady Gaga didn't follow through with this was that, in a way, to divide the album like this would completely contradict the concept of art pop. By dividing Writing what was marketable to pop culture and what was experimental and artistically fulfilling for Lady Gaga, she was essentially splitting the idea of art and pop into art and pop. It's said that Lady Gaga had recorded over 90 different songs for the album, and there are so many leaks of what are presumed to either be scrap tracks from art pop or potential lost pieces of the second act. One of the songs that was allegedly registered was a leaked song titled Nothing On But The Radio. which quickly became a fan-favorite unreleased song amongst Little Monsters. However, in 2022, Addison Rae would flip an Uno reverse card and purchase the song to record for her new project, and that would leak as well. but the details have never been confirmed. Thus, all the fans would continue scouring the internet for years, until 2019, when DJ White Shadow, who is known for producing the majority of the art pop tracks, would state that Lady Gaga's sixth album, which we know as Chromatica, was also art pop's little sister. However, many disagree, including me, that this was an accurate representation of the 2019 album. The producer has teased and hinted at the release of the second act numerous times on his social media. Media, causing fans to trend art pop on Twitter in anticipation for a release that may or may not ever happen. He has also teased one of the presumable tracks from the sequel titled T, a track which little monsters have been infatuated with ever since the title leaked. This is the intro of the song. I put a little bit of the song afterwards, but no vocals. <laughs> He would later shed some light on the difficulty of creating and releasing art pop. He described it in an Instagram post by saying, imagine it as if you were going skydiving and you are stuck in a free fall for what seems like forever, then smashing into the ground after your parachute doesn't open, having to do it again and again and again. Then imagine a bunch of people just standing on the sidelines watching you and stealing your wallet from your lifeless body every time you hit the ground. 
There are so many stories I can tell you about what it took to get art pop into the world. And one day I might. So many scumbags trying to latch onto the train, I had worked so hard to get out of the station. So much transition and turmoil. Let me tell you that I have never been so broken as a human being the day when that record was turned in. End quote. Now, the most current update on Art Pop Act 2 came after fans in 2022 would cause the album to trend on Twitter, once again, and garner over 56,000 signatures from fans, asking for the second act to be released by Interscope. DJ White Shadow would address this on Instagram, stating, Thank you for all your support. You have my promise that I will have something special for you on this day next year. I will honor this record as you have, forever. Thank you so much. Positivity only in the comments, please. I will not delete this post till 11 11 23. It's the music business. There's a whole business to everything. The Chromatica came out and things got a little cuckoo with COVID and she can't even tour it till 2022. And like there's other stuff, the Born This Way 10 year anniversary thing came up. So there's stuff coming out. You, mm -hmm. You've truly, truly got everybody's attention by what you did do. And so, like, for me, I would have never expected any of that to happen in my entire life. So, so, and I think that people understand how important the record is to you. When I say people, I mean me, Gaga, the label, everybody, management, everybody. Timing is a major issue when it comes to all this stuff. So, like, I don't know if I would say, like, do this and this is going to happen. But what I would say is, if you keep it in your mind and in your heart and keep doing stuff for it, then there's likely more of a chance of something that you want to happen than not. I don't want to take away from what Chromatica is or like its run or, or anything like that either. You know, I had a really good time making our pop and I want to make more stuff and I want to deliver the songs that you guys want to hear. I want to do all of that stuff, but I don't have a formula. Gaga herself would put out a statement on Twitter saying, The petition to hashtag buy art pop on iTunes for a volume two has inspired such a tremendous warmth in my heart. Making this album was like heart surgery. I was desperate, in pain. I poured my heart into electronic music that slammed harder than any drug I could find. I fell apart after I released this album. Thank you for celebrating something that once felt like destruction. We always believed it was ahead of its time. Years later, turns out, sometimes artists know. And so do little monsters. Pause up. And DJ White Shadow ended with, I will continue to push for those songs you want so badly that Lady Gaga and I did, and I hope you will get to hear them. Don't let them die. And he said he already sent Lady Gaga a text message. It's a mystery whether we'll ever get to experience what was in store for Art Pop Act 2. But regarding the original album, few other artists since have succeeded in creating a project that trots the line quite so thinly, while escaping essentially untouched. All the controversy and turmoil that came along with the album was a reflection of the hardships Lady Gaga was experiencing experiencing in her day-to-day -day life. However, it makes you wonder, what if things actually went exactly according to plan? Was art pop all a social experiment? Chaos and drama have been known to be contributing factors for many celebrities reaching new levels of fame. While the album may not have dominated the charts like her previous works, it was actually the ninth best-selling record of 2013. And y'all, remember what came out in 2013? There was some stiff competition. Not only that, but Gaga was plastered across every headline of the time, and this would come to be known as one of her most memorable eras, despite what the artist herself may say on Twitter. She was quoted in an Access Hollywood article saying, I'm fascinated with the decay of the blonde pop icon and how culture loves to build and give birth to fantasies and then destroy them and what that means. And as Lady Gaga's career would progress, she would truly find out what that meant. Maybe art pop was an immersive commentary on pop culture and the dark side of fame in Hollywood. As we know, Lady Gaga has experienced that dark side to its fullest, but it was more than just another album cycle. It marks the end of an era for one of the greatest performers of our generation. Art Pop was the final electronically shocking project Lady Gaga would release, and it truly pushed the envelope in a way that was never done again. I think back timeline-wise to, to Art Pop, that was a big, bold, massive artistic pop statement that at the time felt like it kind of divided. It divided and fans loved it and critics were confused by it and it felt like such a huge step towards the club, almost a giant leap. 
right? That people oh, yeah. were just like, whoa, crazy, crazy, it crazy. It was too soon. It was too <laughs> soon. And that's what I was going to say. In a weird way, this feels kind of like it's related and you had another crack at it. Like, I can actually nail what I set out to do last time. Is that fair? I think culture was just like more ready now than they were then. Art pop was very rebellious. I would not adhere to one look. I would adhere to every look. I said my art pop could mean anything. And when I, as an artist, raise my hand and go, I will not subscribe to any archetypical behavior just because it makes the world comfortable, they go, you, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I went through a phase which I'm I stand by I, I stand by everything I've done. Like when I am an old lady and I'm on my deathbed, I'll know that my legacy is authentic because I've always made things that felt true to me. And perhaps in that moment I knew in some type of way, subliminally, that we would be having this conversation years later that it would all be okay because it was real, it happened, and it is relevant. And what I'm making now is a, it's a reminder of, of the freedom that I have as an artist, but also my absolute love for electronic music, my absolute love for the ability for a computer to make something that is so so visceral mm -hmm. and soulful. Now, Heart Pop may have been a commercial failure in the eyes of huge corporations, but to 56,000 of Lady Gaga's fans, it was some of her greatest work, according to the petition. She may have had to work with a completely new team on an entirely new frontier of music, but that frontier impacted electronic music to this day and forever created one of the most ambitious mainstream projects of the 2010s. So will we ever get Art Pop Act 2? I guess we'll find out on November 11th of this year, as that's what DJ White Shadow said in his Instagram post. But whether we do or we don't, Art Pop will forever remain as the most critically acclaimed commercial failure of all time. Shortly after the Art Pop era ended, Lady Gaga would give the most impactful speech of her entire career at the University of Yale. Art Pop had been chocked full of questionable characters pushing Lady Gaga's limits to the extremes, including Terry Richardson and R. Kelly. But Lady Gaga was about to share her truth, that after Art Pop, she found the power to say no. I have had to make decisions like, why am I unhappy? Okay, okay, so Stephanie Gaga hybrid person, why are you unhappy? Why is it that you want to quit music? A couple years ago. It's like, well, I really don't like selling these, you know, uh, fragrances. I don't like uh, wasting my time spending days just shaking people's hands and smiling and taking selfies. It feels shallow to my existence. I have a lot more to offer than my image. I don't like being used to make people money. I uh, feel s sad when uh, I'm overworked and that I've just become a money-making machine and that my passion and my creativity take a back seat. That makes me unhappy. What did I do? I started to say, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I'm not taking that picture. I'm not going to that event. I'm not standing by that because that's not what I stand for. And slowly but surely, I remembered who I am. And then you go home and you look in the mirror and you're like, yes, I can go to bed with you every night. Because that person, I know that person. That person has balls. That person has integrity. That person has an opinion. That person does, doesn't say yes. I check in with myself throughout the day. And I say, do I really want to do this? And if the answer is no, I don't do it. And you shouldn't either. 